Hey gamers, this is Liz Davidson from Beyond Solitaire, and today I'm going to be reviewing Sidekick Saga, designed by Richard T. Saunders. Sidekick Saga is a game in which you are playing as superhero sidekicks, but all the superheroes have disappeared, and you're left on your own to figure out what to do in their absence. The game is going to progress through six of these little issues. Basically what these are are mini rule books that give you information for setup and special circumstances at each part of the story. So as you go, you'll get new powers, access to new sidekicks, and new information about how things are progressing. However, no matter what issue you're playing, there are a few common elements that you'll be recognizing from issue to issue. The first is that the goal of each scenario is to defeat a main villain who will be at the top of some sort of power structure. These villains are all protecting each other, so you need to wipe out level one before you can take out level two, level two has to go before you can get level three, and everybody has to be gone before you can confront the main villain. You're also going to have basically a map of locations that is created by setting out decks of cards that are specific to those locations. And this is where most of the action is going to take place. You'll notice that these numbers are on the board. Those are revealing the locations of these villains that we've uncovered so far. And we also have little standees, I just let them flat so you can see, of the sidekicks that we have chosen for this particular setup. Sidekicks and gangs can appear on and move all over this map getting into fights, and in the case of sidekicks, exploring these decks of cards to try to find things that are gonna be helpful for gameplay. And if that weren't enough, you're always operating on a timer. You're gonna have a deck of bad news cards, some of which are generic, some of which are specific to your villain, and you have only about a day to defeat the main villain once and for all. So what that means is that you're going to have a morning, an afternoon, and once you hit the end of the night, it's the end of the game. While you're rushing around trying to defeat the main villain, you're also gonna to need to keep control of the city terror level, because if it hits the skull, you're going to lose the game. You've essentially lost the trust of the people and everybody is just too freaked out to function. And you'll also be manipulating the sidekick of interest track. So as your sidekicks defeat enemies, basically do things that get attention, they will change positions on the sidekick of interest track to reflect that enemies are paying more attention to them now. And that means that they'll be the first targets in combat. And while you'll have some basic powers that we're gonna talk about in a moment, you're also going to be wanting to unlock some hidden items. And basically what you'll be doing is collecting lead cards and discarding them at specific locations in order to either get access to cool technology or in the case of this first scenario, to the hero headquarters where the superheroes left all of their goodies but that you can't access right at the beginning of the game. Each of your sidekicks is going to have a character card that flips between their sidekick side and their secret identity side each side will allow you to do different things in the game, and you'll have to make some strategic choices about which side you want to end your turn on. And you'll also get basic stats. So you'll get attack, range, defense, hack attack, hack defense, and movement. One of the things that's interesting about this game is that in addition to regular physical attacks, you also have the ability to hack and be hacked. And basically that will throw an opponent or you offline and inhibit the actions that you can do on a specific turn. Each sidekick also has some starting powers, which will be described on the power cards and which potentially can be upgraded later in the game to their better versions. Turn structure is relatively simple. Basically, you will always draw some bad news, so a bad event will happen that you have to deal with. Then you'll have a sidekick phase where your sidekicks get to move, gather resources, choose whether they're going to be their hero or their secret identity, and do what's called populating supply lines, which is exchanging cards from hand to hand. After that, there's a combat phase, although if you're in your secret identity form, you cannot fight. And then there will be an end phase where you adjust city terror and regroup and prepare for the next turn. Each of your sidekicks is gonna have a starting hand that consists of a lead card and then three cards from their home location. So the Tinker's home location is the streets, she'll get three cards from there. The Commissioner's is the police station, so he'll start with a lead card and three cards from the police station. In order to keep growing your hand, however, you're going to have to move to different locations on the board and draw cards from the location that you're in. This is generally fairly simple, but it gets more complicated when there are bad guys in the locations where you'd like to draw cards. Because as long as they're there, you're blocked from accessing those resources unless it is your home location. So in addition to defeating enemies, handling problems that come up, you're also going to need to strategically clear out locations in the city so that you have the ability to take advantage of what is in the card deck there. If you play well, you'll succeed in defeating the main villain in time, and if not, you'll lose and you'll get to try again. 
In addition to the six scenarios that tell the story of the game, there is also a skirmish mode that once you've completed the storyline will allow you to come back and try different challenges and experiment with a few more scenarios. So there's a separate rule book for that. So now for some final thoughts. I will say that though it has some good ideas in it, overall Sidekick Saga didn't do it for me. But we'll start with the good. Overall, I did like where the game was going in terms of the way that it introduces mechanisms and the way that it does a green legacy game. As you play, you get access to more powers and more heroes and new keywords that do keep the game different from game to game and that are also introduced in a gradual way. And overall, I think that that part of the game worked well. I also did like the addition of hacking as part of combat. Having the option to disable an enemy that I was unable to overpower did add some cool decisions to the game. And having to defend against hacking myself made things seem a little bit more treacherous. I also did like the thought that went into the skirmish mode. So when you finish the storyline for the game, there are other scenarios that you can try that exist outside of the storyline. So once you have played through the entire story, there's still something to do with the game. That said, Sidekick Saga was not quite for me. This first point I feel a bit bad about because it's really clear that Sidekick Saga is a passion project. A lot of love went into this game. It doesn't have the backing of a large publisher. It's a game that received funding through Kickstarter. And the kind of game that we should be funding on Kickstarter because the entire point of that site is to help someone realize a dream. However, in a really competitive game market, the realities of how Sidekick Saga came to life do impact its production values. For example, there are cards that have three fonts on them. There are some linguistic quirks in the rule book that I think would have been smoothed out with some more professional editing. And I do think that there's some aspects of the game that make it a little bit bloated that would have been smoothed away perhaps with some more rigorous playtesting. So on the subject of gameplay, the game works fine. It's a perfectly functional game, but I did not feel that the gameplay made me connect with the theme. When I'm playing a superhero game or a game about trying to become a superhero, I want to feel a little bit more zip in the game and a sense of growing power and excitement and drama. Instead, what I got a lot of the time in this game was just kind of trying to was just trying to clear a gang out of a location that I needed to search again and then digging through the cards and hoping that I would get something good. I also didn't particularly like having to save up so many lead cards in order to unlock hidden items. Sometimes it made the game feel like it was dragging a little bit or like I couldn't do anything that was super fun with my turn. I also think there are a few aspects of the game such as the sidekick of interest that were more that brought a little bit more work to the game than they did fun. Having to constantly think about who had done something to attract the attention of the bad guys took my attention away from gameplay, but didn't necessarily give me a lot back when I was playing the game. And my other quibble about Sidekick Saga isn't actually its fault at all. It's that it's a superhero game in a market that has fabulous superhero games. I'm on record as being a huge fan of Sentinels of the Multiverse, and I also really like Marvel Champions. Plus, if you're a modular deck system sort of person, the Sadler Brothers have a superhero game, Hour of Need, that's on the way to market right now. On top of that, Legendary Marvel is great, and DC also has a decent deck building game. So if you're going to make a superhero game, it can't be an okay game or a good game. It needs to be great in order to get my attention among other superhero games that are already out there. So if you're always hungering for that superhero theme, then you may really like Sidekick Saga. But for me, it's a five out of 10. Thanks for watching and happy gaming.